right, we should be live. All right. I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide. Welcome to another live video here on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about prepositions. Uh, I don't think this will be a really long video unless people have lots of questions. Uh, but it should be, a, especially if you are new to the channel, uh, a good way to help you understand the way natives learn prepositions so you can learn them the same way, and then you can use them fluently. All right, looks like people are in. Let me know if chat's working. Gabriella, nice to see you there. All right, let's get the party started. <clears throat> uh, now, the point of this video is not to teach you a whole bunch of prepositions because you would probably just forget them anyway. Uh, the point of this video really is to help you understand the same way a native does, because that's how you speak. So the basic idea of fluency is when you understand things completely, that's when you actually have the confidence to express yourself. All right. Let's begin, looks like we do have people there. Hello, nice to see everybody. Uh, I will keep my eye on the chat uh, as we go. I'll give you a few examples of prepositions as well. Uh, but the reason I thought about doing this video, number one is because I do get lots of questions about this. Prepositions are very commonly used. These are things like an or like in or on, or well, we'll get into some examples of them. Uh, but. I also wanted to do this because as my own children are learning English, they're understanding new meanings of prepositions and new ways of using them. Uh, and I thought uh, just a really good story. This is something that happened yesterday with my older daughter. So I was talking with my uh, family back in the United States. So usually we will just do video chat, Skype with each other usually once a week. And I would talk with my younger sister and her family and my dad uh, and my mom on occasion. <clears throat> uh, and on this occasion, so this was yesterday or two, yes, yesterday, uh, my younger sister, she now has her Christmas tree up in her house. So she put a tree up. Uh, this is our kind of first little example of this. Actually, let me not use this black because it doesn't erase very well. So my younger sister, she put a tree up. She put her tree up. And now when you think about it, usually when native speakers are learning prepositions, they get examples of things from situations. And in this case, uh, like her children would see her getting a tree. And so she brings the tree into her house and it's standing up like this in a little Christmas tree stand in her house. So she puts the tree up. This is what we call like putting it up like this. So this preposition of up, we just have a basic direction where people might think like something is up or down or before or after or in or on. Those are all basic things where we think about like a physical location something is. But if we talk about putting something up to put up, this is where we get our phrasal verb of standing something like this. So she put up her tree. But what was interesting is during the call, so I'm talking with them uh, and I was saying, oh, can you show us your tree? So my older daughter and I were watching and my younger daughter or my younger sister, excuse me, uh, she showed us where her Christmas tree was in her house. And it was in her living room uh, in front of her window, in front of her window. So in her house, she has kind of a little little area. I'm not gonna draw this very well. She has a chair over here. Uh, there was another chair over here, the Christmas tree. There was a window here. This is the front of her house. She has a door here on the other side of this wall, and there was another couch over here. So she, she showed us this scene, and I said, oh, isn't that interesting? Like, very nice. You put up the tree, so you put up the tree you can also say you put the tree up, both of these. When you learn uh, prepositions with phrasal verbs like this, you can learn that some of them are separable. So you can separate the words. So I can say put up the tree or put the tree up. Both of those are fine. Uh, but when I was saying, oh look, you put the tree up or you put up the tree in the window. 
Now, an adult native speaker would understand this like, oh, look at that. It's not physically inside the window. And so my younger daughter, or my older daughter, excuse me, <laughs> getting confused. Yes, my older daughter, Aria, was sitting with me. Uh, and I said, oh, look, you put up the tree in the window. You put the tree in the window. And so when she heard that, she said, what? In? Like you put the tree in the window. And that's because for her, for my daughter, it was a new understanding of the word in, okay? So I want to make it clear that we begin with the situation like this, and that's how we get the vocabulary, okay? So it begins with the situation, then we get the vocabulary, okay? From the vocabulary to the situation, no, 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 no. From the situation to the vocabulary. So I explained to her, you can kind of think about it, like imagine this is a kind of wider uh, window area here. I'm not gonna draw this perfectly, make sure this fits in here. All right, so if we have, imagine this is your window area and you can imagine the tree kind of inside the window area like this. Now it's not physically inside the window. The window is just a, it's basically just a hole in the wall. It's an area with some glass in it. But when we have this image, it's like you can imagine it as being inside this space. So the window area is really this whole area here. So it's in this window area, all right? Now, hopefully I'm not explaining too much, but the point is that when you hear vocabulary, you should be thinking about where it comes from, when we use it from the situation, okay? So my daughter is saying, oh, like it's in the window? And I said, yeah, look, it's, it's, in this, it's in this area over here. So in the same way that she is learning vocabulary, you should be learning vocabulary. You should be learning vocabulary in the same way that she is, okay? So we can talk about this space being here. It's kind of in the window, just like you could imagine it would be, you know, within a box kind of area. It's in this window space, all right? But the tree is in the window. It's in the window, okay? <clears throat> now, a similar way that we would use this in preposition is when you go shopping. So you might be walking outside and you see a store. Let me give you a new image here. So you walk by a store. Here's a little store here and they've got maybe a big window in the front and then they've got some clothes or something. I'm just gonna draw this very quickly. That's a shirt, <laughs> kind of. Uh, here's some pants. Pants are nice and easy to draw. So you have some things in the window, okay? So they're not physically like inside, they're not, they're not like in the glass of the window. That's not what we mean. What we mean is they're within this, within this space, within this hole that we call a window, okay? So a window, a window doesn't mean uh, like a, the piece of glass in here. That's the glass in this, but a window, it just means an area. It's like a door, okay? So a window is this little space that you look through and a door is a space that you can walk through, okay? So they're basically the same thing. So something could be, like I could be standing, what would I call this? There's a person, this is a door right here and I'm standing right here. I'm in the doorway, I'm in the doorway, okay? So I'm standing in this space even though, even if I'm not like right, right within the, like the area of the door, it's basically the same idea. It's like a box and I'm inside it, okay? So now Aria understands, oh, look at that. Like something can be in the window this way, even though the tree is in front of the window. And the same thing here. So I'm standing here on the outside. I'm looking, oh, look at the nice clothes in the window. We will often call this window shopping. So some people, maybe during the holiday season, uh, especially right now in the United States, uh, they would walk around and just look at stores and look at what stores have. Even if they don't buy anything, they're just window shopping. It doesn't mean they're buying windows. It means they're just kind of looking at things. Oh, I'm just looking at the beautiful displays in the window. Okay. Now, similarly, so we have in over here, out the window would mean kind of on the other side of that space. So look, there's a bird. 
So if I'm inside my house, here's a window here, I'm inside my house and I'm looking out and there's a little, maybe a tree branch or something and there's a bird out there. I say, oh, look out the window. There's a bird out the window. All right, so it's not kind of like within that space, but it's on the, the other side of it, okay? So if I have, if there's a bird like, like actually right here in this space, that, that bird would be in the window. But if it's behind the window, outside of that space, it's out the window. So we can talk about something going through the window. Like if I throw this marker through a space, it's going through or I threw it out the window. I threw it out the window. Okay. Hopefully this makes sense. I wanted to give this just a very quick story about how this works. Uh, because when Ari is learning things like prepositions, she'll learn up. It's like, oh, the elevator is going up or the elevator is going down. Okay? Or I'm in some place and now I'm outside of that place. Same idea. But she becomes more nuanced. She gets a more nuanced understanding, a deeper understanding that helps her really understand what natives are talking about when they say something like, oh, look at that, the tree is in the window. The tree is in the window or something is out the window. It's on the other side or away from us in some way. Okay, everybody getting this? Chat is a little bit quiet, but I want to make sure everybody understands how this works. I'll give you one more quick example of this and then I'll take any questions people have. As I mentioned, uh, this probably won't be that long of a video. Just wanted to get on quickly, share this story and let people understand this thing the same way my daughter did. So when you are seeing situations, try to focus on what's happening in the situation and then think about why they might use that vocabulary. So when do people use things? So the sunlight is coming through the window or coming through, throughout the window. Is that sentence right in? You mean like the sun, the sunlight is coming. Well, you would say the sunlight, if sunlight, so if I'm here on the inside, this is me, and the sun is out here and the sun rays are coming here. Yeah, the sun is coming. You could say the sun is coming in. The sun is coming in the window or it's coming through the window. Both of those are fine. Now, if you want to say throughout, that would mean it's covering the whole area. Like there's a sunlight throughout the room. It's not just in one space. So if I have a room like this and there's only a little bit of light over here, that room does not have light throughout the room. That's through, make sure this fits on here. And this is one word, throughout, throughout. So that just means the whole area is covered. So you could have like people, there are people, let's say instead of a room, we have a park here. So there are people throughout the park. All right. Now again, let's see, uh, let's see, Amir Hossein says, I never figured out when to is a preposition. Yes. And so again, it's what I'm trying to show with this video is that we don't begin with a word. We begin with a situation and then learn what words we could use in that. So there are different ways we could describe something. I could say, look, your tree is in front of your window or your tree is by the window. So I could say uh, in front of or by. So it's next to the window. There are many ways I could express this. But in this way, usually people, we talk about this specific expression of having something in the window. I've got decorations in the window. So notice it's a little bit different than on the window. So some people, maybe for a Christmas decoration, they might put actual lights or something on the window itself. It's actually touching the glass or touching the frame of the window. So this, this part here around it, this is called the frame of the window, the window frame. And so if we have a little decoration, maybe I put some little snowflake decorations on the window itself, those are on the window. But when we talk about being in the window, it just means that space that the window makes. So anything within this space coming out even is in the window. It's in the window. So we don't begin with a verb or, a, excuse me, a preposition like to or any word and think, what does that mean? Because the meaning will change depending on the situation. So it's more difficult, and I think somebody asked me about this a few days ago, 
uh, because I talk about both things. Sometimes I will teach a word and then talk about situations that we use it in, or I will talk about uh, a situation and then different vocabulary you can use for that. So obviously these things are connected. The vocabulary and the situation is connected, but really it's the connection. The connection gives you the meaning. Okay, it's not like the situation doesn't like mean anything and the vocabulary doesn't mean anything. It's a connection between the two. Okay, so in this situation, we have a Christmas tree in the window or we might have a, a grocery store with some lovely food or something in the window. Okay. Now, I'll give you one more example. Uh, let me go back and check chat to make sure people don't have any questions. But if you have uh, questions about other prepositions, uh, again, like having something like the word to uh, or anything else, you could uh, also search my channel. Um, so just like if you have a particular preposition you want to learn about, uh, and of course we cover all these things in Fluent for Life as well. But let me check the chat, uh, see if anybody had any questions over here that I missed. <clears throat> All right, Big Boss, nice to see the Big Boss over here. Leonardo says, hi, hi, hi from Thailand, says Cam. Hi from, uh, oh, it doesn't say where you're from, Sohi over there. Gabriel from Mexico. Victor says, hi, Drew, this is my third live lesson, but been watching your video since three weeks ago. Glad to hear it. I hope you've been improving with them. Diana says, thanks, teacher from Mexico. Nice to see you there. Hi from Brazil, says Asafi. Oh, and the psychotic is back. Hey, buddy, why don't you promote my channel? I'm an American teacher with an American accent, and I like you. Well, you're, you're here promoting yourself. There you go, Jose. Uh, hi there, I'm typing from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Victor, again, I'm from Honduras. I've been living in New York for 22 years now. I wish I had found out about your videos before. I've been fluent right now. <laughs> yes, I, I've gotten that comment from many people, but uh, as we say, it's better late than never. Better late than never. So welcome even if you do join us. Obviously the best time to learn with me is 20 years ago, uh, but the second best time is today. All right, let's see, Mr. De La Salas, Andres from Colombia. Victor says, good evening everyone. Asira is good evening or good morning. Uh, let's see, Saudi from, well, I guess where you're from, maybe Saudi Arabia, Salem. Love and respect from Afghanistan, says Suresh. Victor again. Uh, so yes, I answered that question already. Got it, thank you. All right, got it, thank you from El Salvador, says B. Cruz. All right, let's see. And Jose says, what about the sun is coming into the window? Yep, you can say that as well. So the sun is coming in. Usually, and I've talked about this before, if you search my YouTube channel for prepositions, you should find examples of this. I know some of them are probably more difficult to find because they're in the middle of longer videos. <laughs> Uh, but yes, you can talk about like something is in the window. So you would say this is in. So sunlight is kind of in the window, but when we talk about into, to usually implies some kind of motion or movement. So we're talking about not just it being here, so that would be in, but it's going into. The movement is important, okay? So when you hear like, I'm in the room, like maybe I'm not moving at all. I'm just in, I'm in the room right now. But if I'm going into, it means there's motion from outside to inside, okay, into. So typically to by itself is talking about direction or motion in some way. And again, uh, I'm, I'm giving you just a little bit of understanding of what a word is, but it's always best to get lots of examples, and that's why I give lots of examples. Uh, but when you, when you hear a word like this, don't try to remember the preposition like, oh, to means this. It's just, you will learn different situations. And again, the point of this video is showing how, like my daughter will learn a word like in, where she learns a very basic meaning of, like it would be a preposition of place. So the marker is in my hand, okay? So she learns, oh, like the doll is in the dollhouse. And so she recognizes, okay, if something is inside something, like we have in, and then we have out, in, out on okay so it's on my hand and this is an interesting thing like another uh, nuance about these prepositions I might have something like uh, here we have the marker is on my hand or in my hand okay and so when we're learning things like this if it's just inside that the interesting thing that that she discovered 
from that example of the Christmas tree is that, oh, look at that. Like you can have a, a kind of window area, even though it might not be inside the window itself, it's, it's still in that general area. It's inside that area. All right, so her understanding expanded and she developed more of a nuanced understanding of that thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, I got that one. Let's see. Nils, nice to see you there. Hello, Drew. Is there a time change in Japan? So winter time that the clock is set back an hour? No, uh, we do not have daylight savings time in Japan. It's just the same time all the time, which is awesome. I guess when we're uh, in Japan, but when we have to contact people outside of Japan, maybe it makes it a little bit more difficult. I remember actually talking uh, to my, my family a few weeks ago when the time change happened in the United States, uh, and I thought I was supposed to be there an hour earlier, but I was incorrect. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not really, I don't, I don't know, I don't really care about daylight savings time. I'm, I'm happy to just have every time be the same time over here. All right, uh, Dran says, I'm quiet because I'm in awe. Dran, did you change your, your thumbnail image? Is that new? Let's see, Parham says, hi, Professor from Iran. Nice to see you there. Let's see. I'm confused between pronunciation and want. Ah, pronunciation of want and worn. Want and worn. All right, uh, let me give a, a quick thing. Uh, there's a little bit of, obviously, pronunciation is related to this, uh, but just a quick lesson about this. So for people who want to improve their pronunciation, to understand native speakers more easily, and to maybe lose their accent or to sound more like a native English speaker, remember that native English speakers are learning. They have a step-by-step -step system for learning pronunciation. So this is how children learn, like American children in the United States would be learning uh, English pronunciation. They begin to read with simple things like just the alphabet, so A, B, C, D, like that, and then they move up through short vowel sounds. I'll just give a few examples of this uh, right here from, from those you gave me. So one of the earliest ones they learn is uh, like just a short vowel, like here we have cat, cat, cat. Now as you move up, you would get something like Wa, this is the same sound like wa, water. So we get wa, nt. So wa becomes one sound, and then nt. This is a blend here, uh, but you would learn it like this wa, nt. So this a sound, these are two different, and this is, it, it's interesting, it works exactly like vocabulary. So the letter is the same, but the sound is not, okay? So this is k, a, this short vowel a sound, k, a, t, and this is a, wa, want. Now the other word you asked about is a higher level word. Uh, I think that was worn, and this is the a, r sound is actually connected here. So instead of the w and the a connected like this, the a and the r are connected. So we have wa, r, n, warn, 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 to warn, warn, warn. And it actually, it sounds the same as this, actually. Warn, warn. So if there is trouble, you want to warn somebody, to warn somebody. Both of these words have the same pronunciation. All right? So warn also, like, I, like something was worn, like I wore some clothing, that kind of worn. Or like it's, it's getting old, it's a worn out shirt. All right? But this is, again, how we learn the pronunciation of these things in steps. And rather, if you're trying to compare these two things, it's much easier if you follow the same process. So you can learn all of the pronunciation in the same way that natives learn it, and you will also be able to fix any particular errors or confusion or doubt you have about particular words, okay? So if we start with something simple like cat, and we know, okay, this is the short vowel A sound, a, a. So cat, fat, bat, like that. And then we move up to things like want and worn, like that. All right, hopefully that makes sense. If you'd like to do this, this whole thing is set up for you in Frederick. And you can get this app uh, just by clicking on the link in the description below this video. So I built this whole system so that anybody could learn pronunciation and reading and spelling and vocabulary and grammar the native way with one simple app, all right? It's very cool, definitely get the app. 
uh, and it will take you through this whole process, but it will be more like a game where you explore the app rather than just trying to memorize a bunch of rules. But the point is you will be able to compare different sounds and it's the comparison of different things that lets you understand them like a native, okay? So I don't want you to compare something like in your language to English, I want you to compare different things within English itself. So that will teach you how to think about them like a native speaker. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you'd like to hear like me saying words like this, like my, me saying warn, I think warn is in there, cat is in there, want is in there, all of those words should be in the app and you can have the, you can hear me pronounce them 1000 times if you like. <laughs> All right, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Let's see, just curious, are you a Japanese citizen? No, I'm not. Um, I don't know what I, I have a, a spouse visa currently, uh, and that's a five-year visa. I should probably maybe get that renewed. I need to check to see if I need to renew that or not. Uh, but I'm considering permanent residency. Uh, I will see, maybe. Let's see, see ta uh, Tampan, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Tampan. What is the difference between into and towards when we walk, uh, when we talk about movement? Sure. Let's imagine we have a doorway here. So this is a, just a regular door frame. It's open, open door. And I am over here. Now I can be moving toward the door, toward the door. What did you say again? Make sure that's like, yeah. T-O-W-A-R-D, towards. So you will hear people say toward the door and also towards the door. You will hear both of those. Uh, so I can be moving toward the door, but I could still like continue moving closer and closer, but not actually go into the door. Once I cross this area, then, I've gone into the door, okay? So if I'm moving towards something, I'm just approaching it. Like I'm moving toward the camera or I'm moving away from the camera. So moving closer to you or moving further away. Uh, but once I go into something, then I've actually crossed some kind of border, okay? Like I'm crossing the door frame like that, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's see. All right, hopefully I got that. Like XDL Beck, uh, having English class and watching you stream. Nice to see you. All right, what are you learning in your English class? You mean like, like in a classroom or something? Uh, let's see, Armando says, what is your opinion about singing songs for improving pronunciation? I think it works. Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the main idea is that you should improve pronunciation by listening to lots of different native speakers. So each person will have a slightly different pronunciation. So I have, I have my own unique voice. Now I can try to change my voice a little bit and mimic other people or sound like other people, but each person is physically unique. And so my voice, like my, you can hear my voice is maybe a little bit more nasal sounding because I don't know, I got a, like a funny nose or something like just, just the, the way my voice is shaped or, or, you know, just like how I make sounds, how high my voice is or how deep my voice is. Um, but each person will have their own unique voice. And so it's much better uh, rather than like you trying to output something uh, as you get more examples. So as, as you get more examples by listening to other people speak, that will help you feel more confident about what your own unique speaking voice is. Okay, so you will feel more confident about that. And then one of the ways to practice that, yes, uh, is singing. So you could sing, you could talk, you can do all kinds of things in order to improve your accent. Uh, but listening is like one of the, the big things that a lot of people, they kind of forget about that because they think pronunciation begins with you speaking and pronunciation actually begins with you listening to lots of other people. And so as you get a good ear for what other people are saying, you will naturally become able to make those same sounds yourself. But they will be within your own unique English speaking voice. <clears throat> Alejandro, greetings from Mexico. Lindo, nice to see you there. So somebody doing presentation, the class is so boring. Oh, so you're in, you're in a class right now and wa <laughs> but watching this video instead. <laughs> Alejandro, thumbs up right off the bat. Thank you very much. Yes, if you enjoy the video, do click the like button. Video, uh, video lovers out there, YouTube likes it when people click like buttons. That's how they, you know, because YouTube isn't, is not thinking, you know, 
It's just, so you gotta tell it what to do. So like the button. Uh, Kasan says, greetings from Sri Lanka. Victor again, for me, I had struggled many times to differentiate the spelling of want and won't. And yes, part of that, <clears throat> uh, you'll notice all of these skills are connected together. So if we, if we have uh, lots of good examples of native speakers saying things and we will be able to distinguish those. So often people like non-natives non will have trouble with words like can and can't. And that's because they they just don't really have a lot of examples, um, you know that that kind of thing. Uh, so they need more examples of those uh, from native English speakers in order to develop a sense for that. But as you can hear them well, then you can learn to spell them better uh, and and understand which words natives are saying. Uh, but as I gave the example before, Frederick will teach you how to spell all of these things, and it will give you really good listening practice. There's games in the app. Uh, that will let you practice listening and comparing different sounds. And so one of the things I encourage people to do is while they are scrolling through, so there, there are different letters that you can scroll to produce words, and you should close your eyes, scroll different letters, and then listen to the sound and see if you can spell out the word. And then you can check your answer by opening your eyes and seeing what the app tells you. So lots of different ways to improve <coughs> with the app. Uh, let's see. See, see, Carlos with some hearts over there. Thank you very much. Uh, Amir, can you explain how I'm angry with you works? Oh, well, it just means I'm, I'm angry uh, that, like, you know, you did something and I'm angry. I'm angry with you. So it, it's, it's an interesting idea of being, uh, you could almost have two meanings or you could have two meanings with this. One is you and I are both angry together, <laughs> but usually... If, if I say like, I'm angry with you, it just means I'm angry at you. That's another way of saying it, but I'm angry with you. Uh, they both mean the same thing of you did something that, that made me upset. So my, my mom is very angry with me because I broke, I don't know, her favorite dish. So I dropped the dish on the floor and broke it and she was very upset with me. So she was upset with me or she was angry with me. You can use both of those. And remember, if you're not quite confident about something or, and this is a problem that adults have because we're trying to logically understand how language works and sometimes it just, like, it just seems kind of odd how we would say it. Like, why would we say angry with someone? That's, it's kind of, because you're, you're not really with them, you're like against them in, in this situation. Uh, but, so it's better to just get lots of examples where you hear like, I'm angry with you or I'm frustrated with something. It just means like, uh, my connection with this thing is, is either good or bad. So another example would be like, I'm good with children. So I'm able to take care of kids and I play well with kids or something like that. So I'm good with children or I'm bad with computers. So it's the connection is the idea about the word with in this situation. So there's me and computers and, and how do we connect with each other? So I'm, I'm good with computers. Like, like you put me with computers and that's like a good thing. Or like you put me with you right now and I'm angry with you. So like in this situation, when we are together, I am angry. So there are different ways you can, you can try to logically understand or explain these things to yourself. Uh, but the more situations you see, uh, the more you will understand these patterns that natives use. So that's again the point of today's video is trying to recognize patterns the same way natives do by focusing on situations rather than focusing on the vocabulary and then trying to understand what vocabulary means. Uh, let's see, Dai says, uh, hello from Vietnam. Good morning, a good day, good day to you. Let's see, she buys eggplants every day at the supermarket, in the supermarket, which one is more correct? Uh, both of those would be fine. So just understand, uh, and you can search my channel for videos about at versus in versus on, but with the grocery store example, you can say both of these things and be correct, but the nuance, the slight difference in understanding is, is clear when you look at the examples of these things. So let's say we have, here's a grocery store uh, with some food inside it. So right now, let's say I'm standing here so I, I can be outside of the physical grocery store. I'm standing here, but I'm still in this general area. I am at the grocery store here. 
So I could be here, I could be here, I could be here, I could be here, 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 anywhere within this general area, and you could say I'm at the grocery store, okay? So I got something at the grocery store. So maybe I'm sitting on the roof of the grocery store, I am still at the grocery store. But when people want to be more specific, if I'm talking with my friend and I say, hey, let's meet at the grocery store, okay? I've just said, we're gonna meet somewhere in this general area. So it's not a different location, so it's not at the post office, at the beach, at my house, we're at the grocery store. But maybe I want to be now more specific, like, well, meet me inside the grocery store, uh, like at the fruit section. Okay, so I need to be more specific, like, so now I, want, I say meet me inside the grocery store, I'm talking about the physical building, so I'm still at the grocery store, but now I'm, I'm inside it, I'm more specific. And then meet me at uh, the, the, like, the fruit section, okay? So right now I'm talking about this very specific place at the grocery store. So to answer your question, if you're, if you're at some, some location, you can buy something at a store, or you can buy something in a store. It's the same thing, it, like for the situation you're talking about, like I can be right here, I am at the grocery store and I am in the grocery store at the same time, okay? And in this way, uh, it's that, this is why I try not to, I really encourage people uh, not to think so much about specific vocabulary and think like, well, why did this, this native speaker said I'm in the store and this other native speaker said I'm at the store? Why did they say two different things? And it's because it doesn't matter. You know, for this situation, they both could mean the same thing. But this is how you can understand the slight difference. The nuance is like a subtle change in something. All right, so it's not, it's like not this thing, it's this slightly different thing over here. This is the understanding of a nuance. Nuance. So to have a nuanced understanding, a nuanced understanding of something means you're not just thinking like, well, in means this or at means that. You're thinking, ah, okay, like this is my, I have a, a, a slightly deeper or more interesting or more precise understanding of what something means, a nuanced understanding of that. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Uh, let's see. So Mexico Lindo is pretty Mexico. Yep. Que lindo. Let's see. Si, tampon. Do you ever talk about the passive voice? Uh, I don't know if I have a video specifically on that, but I, I, like, I, I try not to explain to people something like the passive voice. It's just more like, like what, what is happening to you, you know, rather than you doing something. And so try not to, I, I just try not to use like grammar terms like that. I mean, it's helpful if you are, um, I guess, like trying to look up things like that. You want to be able to look up like what does the passive voice mean? But typically I'm just thinking like if I were to explain that to my daughter, I would just say, oh, like what are you doing or what is something being done to you, okay? And then I would just give lots of examples like that. But I don't, I don't think I have a video specifically on uh, passive voice. I have Vietnam, let's see, XD again. Uh, can you imagine that my teacher just speak both language, Chinese and then English and swap them so frequently? Bad class, boring, make no sense. <laughs> Recommend your teacher watch my videos. <laughs> or you can, or at least share them with the other, other students in your class. Let's see, uh, die again. someone told me that if you just take more and more input, you can have basic conversation, you cannot achieve the advanced level. What do you think about that? Well. That doesn't make any sense. Like that's how, that's how everybody learns every language. The point, like when people think about input, I remember getting a, I got an email a few months ago from, I think it was like an English teacher in, in England. And he was like, oh, do you, do you do that like input stuff? And I was like, well, that's kind of how everybody learns any language. So yes, that's what I do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> But just to, just to make it clear, the point is not to just get like random input. It's like, well, I need to just like be around English or hear lots of examples. The point really is to have complete understanding of something because complete understanding allows you the confidence to speak. 
Okay, let me say that again. Complete understanding allows you the confidence to speak. And so you don't begin by just repeating things, and you also don't get fluent by just getting random, like random information. So if I go to China today, and I don't speak any Chinese, I don't know any Chinese, I, I know like a sheshe or whatever, but I don't speak Chinese. Uh, but if I go to China and, and I'm just like sitting in a cafe listening to people have conversations, I'm probably not going to understand most of what they're talking about. Maybe like 99.9% .9 I will not understand. I might, if I hear a word and I try to recognize it and connect it with something, I might understand, but I don't have complete, confident understanding about the language. So I really want to make it clear, it's not about getting just random input. The point is not input. The point is just to learn something the same way you learned your native language so that you understand it well enough to feel confident about using it, all right? So the typical way people think about language learning is they spend a little bit of time learning something, usually through their native language or they're trying to study grammar rules or pronunciation or something like that. The typical way we're going to maybe try to memorize some grammar tables or look at some flashcards, but it doesn't really help you understand the language well. And that's what creates all of these problems that people have about, uh, I can't remember words or I don't feel confident when I speak. It's because you don't really feel confident that you understand something and that's why you can't use it, okay? So the goal is to get input and this works at every level because if you think about even as an adult learner of your native language, this is how you get fluent in new words today. So even as an adult, it's not like a basic thing. You could be learning a new thing about, I don't know, maybe your career or some news event or something like that. You, you learn about it through input, all right? So I'm, I don't like create these things from nowhere. I'm getting input from other people and when I understand something well enough, then I can speak about it. So it's not just for basic people. Uh, it's not just for like kids or whatever, it's for anybody and this is how we continue to get fluent uh, in, our, in our, our native language as well. Thanks in Ocean, sir, it helped me, glad to hear. Uh, I believe the word with originally means against, like in fight with. Yeah, I don't, I mean the etymology of that could be different also. Uh, like in British English, they'll use different words. Uh, like in American English, we say different from, but in, Amer uh, in British English, they say different to. I thought that was interesting, but there are lots of little differences like that between the languages. Uh, but it's, you know, it's good to look at the etymology, the origin of words. Uh, but again, trying to focus on how people are using things, you can easily do also a Google search and that will tell you lots of different examples, uh, like how many millions of examples of, of people are using something versus a different way. Victor, again, my coworker speaks uh, just English. I asked them uh, when to use the word whatsoever. I hear that on the TV a lot, and they have all explained it to me like 200 times, but I still uh, don't know when to use it whatsoever. Well, again, like, so a word like whatsoever, like I don't have any idea whatsoever, it's, just, it's, it's kind of adding like at all. Like I have like none, like absolutely none, okay? And that's one usage of the word. But it's better to get different examples of something like that, so I just gave you one example. But I would Google whatsoever and look at the different examples you get. And rather than trying to get a, um, like, like, like one example or trying to understand what the word means, by getting lots of examples, then you start to understand the, the core meaning or the multiple meanings of words or phrases. Um, so whatsoever could mean like, like, I don't like, I don't like this guy at all. I don't, I don't like that guy whatsoever. Like I, like, I don't like him at all. Like it's not like zero, all right? So that could be one usage of that word but I would Google it to find many more and then compare those different things and then you can look for patterns. And that's where you start understanding it like a native. All right. Uh, so, okay, I got that one there. Max says, uh, does nuance mean idea? You used the word recently and I didn't understand it. Yes, I explained nuance before. It just means like a slight understanding or a slight difference of something. If I say like turn the crank, like people don't really know like how far, but a more nuanced explanation would be like turn it two degrees. So like just turn it, turn it 30 degrees or something like that. So I'm giving you a more specific or more precise way of looking at something. So often people will say like, is something good or bad? 
And it's like, well, maybe we need a more nuanced understanding that like there's some gray area or maybe something in the middle. So often it's just a better, kind of more clear, more precise, more specific understanding of something. Joseph says, how can I apply the EFL method correctly? I'm taking words that I don't know when I read something, I understand their meaning and context, write sentences in an Excel, is it okay what I'm doing? Yeah, if, if that way is, is helpful for you, then yeah. So I would just get lots of examples of things. If you learn a new word, I mean, it's okay to look up in a dictionary, especially an English to English dictionary, uh, to get idea about what something means, that's okay. I just don't recommend looking like, you know, like an English to uh, like your native language dictionary. So you should be able to look up things, especially at your level, if you can understand what I'm talking about. Uh, you can understand my speech. You should be able to use an English to English dictionary. Uh, and in that case, yeah, so you can, you can look up the meaning of a word and then just try to get many examples um, Youglish is a, is a good resource for, for listening to different examples of that. So youglish.com, I think, is a website for that. Uh, Youglish. And so that will, you can type in a word and it will find examples of that from YouTube transcripts, I think. And then you can listen to those. Uh, but yes, I would, I would look that up, uh, whatever those words are, and then try to, get, try to get different examples in that same situation. So even in your book or wherever you're reading something, um, like to be, <clears throat> to be in, like you, you should try to get it from the context of the story or whatever you're reading if you can. And if not, then, then try to just get more examples of something. But yeah, it's good to get more examples, write them down and help you remember those things. Uh, let's see, Frederico says, I'm from North Carolina. Thank you for the effort and teaching. I greatly appreciate it, it's my pleasure. Nazar says, uh, or Nazar, uh, I work study at in school. Yeah, and so it's the same thing. So you, like you could be, I could be right here, like I'm at school right now. Even if I'm standing outside in the school parking lot, I'm still at school. But I can also be inside a physical building and I'm in school right now. And also just generally speaking, I could say, yeah, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at school or I'm going to school or I'm in school, even if I'm not physically there, just to talk about like I, I go to a particular school. So if I am a college student, but I'm not physically in that school, so I'm, I'm like at home right now, I'm away on vacation or something, I'm still in school, but I'm on vacation, okay? So I'm still in school, or I, uh, but typically I'm like at school would, would really be more used for, for being like, like on that, uh, the physical location on that property. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, Alex says, uh, hi teacher, could you please explain the difference between farther and further? Uh, I think farther, farther is like, it's, it's a distance, uh, and further is a distance or like a difference of degree. So like, you could understand something further or you could, you could explain something further, like I could go on, like I could explain something further, further with the UR, further. Uh, but farther would mean like physical distance. So if I'm walking to my house, I could keep walking farther, all right? But in general, like native speakers will use them interchangeably. <laughs> so they're, they're, again, that's a slight nuance that people might not care about, but get more examples of that. So look up more examples of both of those uh, and you can see how people use them correctly or differently or, uh, and again, it will, it will help you feel more confident about using them yourself. Victor, again, I've heard that it, uh, heard of it too, and what I could get from it is it's kind of like at all. Yeah, uh, just by context. Yeah, so again, like, like I don't like something. All right, if I just say I don't like something, right? Say I don't like something at all. Like I really, it just means I really don't like it. So I don't like it like whatsoever. I don't like it at all. All right, so that's the, the general, it's, it's, it's adding emphasis like in no way, so not at all whatsoever. Hopefully that makes sense. But yes, you, you got the idea though. That's great. Uh, let's see, Juan says, hello, greetings from Tennessee. And the psychotic again says, do you like the states? Are you guessing, uh, you're talking about like the United States? Be honest. <laughs> well, I have a very nuanced view of the United States. <laughs> uh, and that, that would be a whole other conversation. So like there are some things I do like and some things I do not like about it. Uh, see again, I am boring, I am bored. 
correct. Well, you, you, it's, it, it is possible to be boring. So let's say, like, some people think I'm boring. Maybe you think I'm boring, you know? It just means I am, like, I'm not saying anything interesting or people don't like listening to me. I'm boring. I'm boring. But to be bored means, like, something is, is making me, like, some other thing that is boring is making me feel bored. So it's, it's important to understand, like, I am boring and I am bored is, it's not like one of those is correct and the other is not. It depends on the situation. So if you are reading a book and the book is boring, then you feel bored by the book. Okay? You can think about, like, uh, what's a good way to think about this? Like, to bore, to bore a hole, to bore. Now this is this is a little bit different, but I'm I'm trying to give you a logical way to understand this because I know a lot of people have trouble with this idea. To bore means like to drill a hole into something else. So I'm like turning a little crank and drilling a hole down into something. So this is you know there's there's you like reading a book over here. So you're holding a book, uh, but you can feel like you know there's like a drill going into your head, like it's like boring into you. So the book is boring and you are bored by the book, okay? So remember, uh, when you're looking at things like this, you would also look at other examples like scary. So the ghost is scary and I am scared, okay? So you can get more examples of those things and it's understanding the pattern that helps you use those things confidently like a native. All right, Alejandro says whatsoever. Uh, no, 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 don't, don't give a don't give a bunch of translation. Don't do that. <laughs> All right, you prepare for Christmas in Japan? Yeah, actually, uh, Christmas Christmas is a popular holiday out here, probably for like holiday shopping reasons. <laughs> uh, but it's also more of a a couples holiday. Little kids do get presents, um, but. Yeah, so uh, Japanese people do do celebrate and enjoy Christmas. Usually, right after Halloween, they begin uh, November first. Uh, have Halloween decorations down and Christmas decorations up. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so that is a good example, Alejandro. But yes, see if you could do it without using the the Espanol in there. Uh, how linguistic space can be related to learning fluency, Sir Andrew says in his year. Uh, linguistics basics. Well, I, I don't know what, what what specifically are you asking. What do you mean linguistics basics? I mean, learning learning languages for most people, I mean, I would say like almost everybody because we all learn the same way, uh, is if you understand something, then you can speak. But you don't get fluent by just repeating what other people say if you don't understand what it means. I could begin speaking an alien language like Yeah, just like start speaking some sounds like that. You're not going to learn anything from that. I have to make it understandable and then I have to give you enough examples that you feel confident about using something too. That's how it works. So we don't begin by forcing you to speak. We begin by making the language understandable. Then you feel confident that you understand something, and then you speak. So it's, it's not a complicated process. It's just the opposite of what most people do. So remember, you don't need a speaking partner. You don't need to try to force yourself to speak. You really just need to get lots of good examples of things that help you understand. All right. Uh, let's see. How's the Christmas Day in Japan? Uh, well, it's, it's not... I don't think Christmas is, it's not like a national holiday out here. I mean, people just, you know, it depends on what day it is. Some families, they do go do things and there are events for, you know, they will, there will be like Christmas tree light ups and things like that. But it's, I don't know, it's, it's I mean, it's not as big uh, like in the United States or other like, you know, mostly uh, like more Christian countries, I guess. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Lesio, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I can't really stay for this live, so just came to tell you I appreciate your work a lot. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Remember, you don't have to watch these videos live to benefit from them. You can come back anytime. Uh, let's see. Abdullahan says, I agree with you. I don't know what you're referring to, but thank you. It's always good to have people agree. <laughs> I've just started to get used to the language. Good work, says the receiver. Yes. Whiskey Shen with the uh, little smiley uh, heart faces over there. Sam says, how do you guys practice your speaking skills? 
Well, the, the practice of speaking, it actually comes from understanding the language very well. And so you should be spending more of your time really feeling confident about the language. So often I will have uh, like people who have very advanced knowledge of English who join my programs because they still can't speak. So they think they know something, but remember that understanding, understanding is a process. And I gave an example of that in this video. So here's my daughter, I'll give her some long hair here. Uh, and she, she learns like the, the meaning of the word in. And so she hears this like, oh, the, the present is in the box or I am in the house or something like that. A very basic usage of something being inside something else. But she has a strong understanding about that. But when I gave her the example of, oh, the Christmas tree is in the window, that was a little bit confusing to her because it was a slightly different, a slightly more nuanced understanding of the word in. And so the situation is a little bit different. And also you might have words that have a completely different meaning like the word bark. So bark could be talking about the skin of a tree or it could be talking about like the sound of a dog, like round, round, round. We call that a bark also. So a child might hear bark one way, like the dog is barking, but then they also learn the bark of a tree and they think, well, that's weird. We have the same word, but it's got two completely different meanings and they just, you know, they come to understand the language that way. But in this way, uh, so my daughter had like 100%, she had complete understanding. So like, ooh, it went all the way up to 100%. Complete understanding that when something is inside something else, you can say in, or you can say inside. But then she got this other meaning, oh, here's a, a window over here with a Christmas tree in front of the window. So that the tree is in, it's not like physically inside the window, but it's basically within this space. And so she would learn that and think, oh, that's interesting. Now, like her, her understanding of the word in expanded, okay? So as she learns different ways of using something or she learns more advanced phrasal verbs that also use the word in, like to put something in uh, or to uh, like to take something in. So I'm, I'm looking at like a beautiful scene outside or even I'm looking at a lovely Christmas tree in someone's window. So I could be outside of someone's house and I see the Christmas tree behind their window from, from my perspective. Uh, and then like, okay, here's, a, here's a, a Christmas tree here. Like, look at that, I'm taking in, to take in the phrasal verb, to take in the tree. It means I'm like absorbing that, I'm just enjoying the beautiful view, to take it in, I'm taking it all in, okay? So as my daughter learns these different things, she, she kind of hears a new usage and then she gets some examples until she feels very confident about something. Okay, now I understand something. I understand it completely. I understand it fully. So it's not just like there are different levels of understanding. So what happens with most people that are learning is they will hear something, they will hear it a few times and they get to the, the kind of awareness. I call this the awareness level of understanding. So you recognize something, but it's different than having complete understanding where you really feel confident about speaking, okay? So you need to get more examples or something to go from the awareness level to what I call the ownership level, but it's really just complete understanding, okay? So it's not like, there's not, there's not only one moment of understanding, it's, it's like this. There's a, 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 like a grade of understanding. So you move from here up to here. Okay, so the point of this is that your, your speaking ability comes from this. So as you get more understanding, when you get complete understanding, uh, then you have the confidence to speak about something. Okay, so it should be pretty easy this way. So you should be spending more of your time. The real practice that gets you fluent comes from understanding the language better over time. And then you speak. Okay, so speaking is the result of having gotten complete understanding of the language and then you speak. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So again, for people, I will get new people all the time watching my videos and so I like to remind people, especially my people who've been watching for a long time, don't worry about finding native speakers to practice with. The practice comes from understanding the language better. So this is what we do and we prove in Fluent for Life. So as you get more understanding of something, you feel more confident about it, then you speak.
Now, when you're in a conversation, of course, like you can improve even more by using more words and you will learn more. You will get even more input from the people you speak with. But most of the real practice that gets you to fluency, it just comes by yourself as you get more examples that help you feel confident about using something. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's see here. And look at you guys still speaking. Speak English. What are you guys doing? Gracias por la explosión. Uh, let's see, is there a difference? Uh, pronunciation, eat and it. Yes, there is a difference. Eat and e. So e, e, that's the short vowel i, i sound, and e is the long e sound. Get Frederick. Let me put this up on the board for people again. If you want to understand the difference between sounds, Click on the link in the description below this video to get the app. It will show you how to pronounce all these things. It will help you understand the differences between them. So you can say it and then eat, eat. All right, uh, let's see. I'm damn late. It's okay, Tom. You're, you're better late than never. It's okay. All right, I got it. Let's see. The Spanish was a victor. Sorry for that, though. No, it's okay. <laughs> See, this is like to be a good teacher of languages means that you can make something understandable within the language. Now, sometimes I get it like people just want to give a translation. It's faster and easier to do it that way. But if you can really help someone understand something in that language, then you really got them thinking and ah, they feel confident then about how to do something. That's why I do what I do. So most of, like, you'll notice my lessons, I will give some Japanese examples sometimes, but my channel is not for specifically or only Japanese people to learn English, like many channels are. So you can find lots of channels on YouTube that are, it's like English for speakers of Portuguese or Portuguese for speakers of English or whatever. But to me, you shouldn't have all these different languages for other languages and channels or whatever. It should just be, here's how to learn Chinese all in Chinese. That's what I call the holy grail, the most important way uh, and what everybody should be using because that's what everybody does as a native. So non-natives should be able to do the same thing as well. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, that's, oh, okay, I got that right. Uh, Victor says, perfect said, teacher, in my experience, music does it, but you need uh, to deep into it. I mean, words, also the rhythm. Yes, I published my first book. Unfortunately, first copies are bootleg copies. Well, congratulations, I guess. <laughs> Sam, it's nice to see you there. Nice to see you, Sam. Uh, you helped me a lot with English, Drew. Glad to hear it, Margie. Uh, I have a question. You're any level. What does that mean? Explain that again. Uh, Max says, I want to read science textbooks myself, but I cannot do that because my English is weak for that. Well, you should try to read uh, science books for kids. Read science books for children. So you will, you will get different explanations. I've given this explanation before, uh, but there is, I think, Wired Magazine did a series on YouTube about different levels of people explaining things. So like a person is trying to explain a black hole or you know, different like particle physics or something. So, so complicated things, but they try to explain that to a child. And so I would start getting more examples of that. Um, and that will help you understand things. So don't don't wait until you you try to like get to the like college level of or something like that of a difficult topic. And just start with the basics that even a child could understand. Omar says, "Is there any PDF or dictionary for most common used prepositions with examples?" I'm just struggling with prepositions. Uh, well, yeah. So Tom said, "Fluent for life." <laughs> yes, like that. We 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 do have all that in fluent for life. Um, but yes, you can just Google. I mean, if you're looking for a list of prepositions, but remember that getting a list of things, even with examples, it's it's not going to really get you to perfect understanding. Uh, you need to get lots of examples of natives using things until you feel confident about using them yourself, okay? So don't just go looking for a list or a PDF uh, because uh, that's unlikely to get you to the fluent level of understanding. Guadalupe says, hello, teacher. This is the first time that I say hi. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Nice to see you here. Juan, again, I understand almost everything what you say. Now, let me stop right here. This is a common misphrasing that I will get from people. So just for everybody here, I understand almost everything you say. 
So you don't have to put the what in there. You could say that. I understand almost everything that you say. That's possible. You could say that. Or you could just say, I understand almost everything you say. So you don't need the what in there in your videos. But when I watch other videos or listen to music, I just don't understand. I feel uh, like behind of a beginner. Yes. And so again, I'm, I'm making my language in these videos understandable. Okay. So I'm speaking more slowly more clearly, even though I'm still blending my sounds together, so you can hear what it's like to, to speak more like a native, but I'm still blending my sounds together, so you can hear that. Um, and I'm also using just like kind of simpler, or maybe less complex vocabulary. So I'm not using idioms or movie quotes or other things that you probably would not know. So in order to get to that level, this is what we do in Fluent for Life. So we take you from this level now of being able to understand me to understanding music and movies and having conversations, that kind of thing. You can do this uh, by yourself if you get lots of examples, but that's really what you need to do. So I would think about specific things you want to learn about and then get many, many examples of those. So like watching videos about uh, how to train your dog whatever, just as a, as a particular thing, it doesn't really matter. But get lots of examples of that. Sam says, thank you, teacher. I'm having problems with how to use whether or not. Yeah, uh, so it just means like whether we go, so I could talk about like if I do something or I do not do something. So whether I do something or not, it's just you can remember it as a particular phrase like this. So whether it's raining or not, so even if it is raining or if it is not raining, I will still go to the, to the park, so whether or not. Now, another way of using this is I don't know if something will happen. So I don't know whether or not it will rain tonight. But you can, in that case, you can just say, I don't know whether it will rain uh, tonight or not. You, know, you, can, you can even break up, break up the phrase by that way. Uh, but typically it's talking about like two different options. And then usually like you will, you will either make a choice about something. So I have to go to, I don't know, I have to, I have to go get a new suit. I got, I got fat and now I need to get a new suit. I don't know if I will go to this place or that place. So I don't know whether or not uh, I will go to that place. So if I'm, I'm talking about like one location, maybe I will go there, maybe I will not. Or tomorrow, like I don't know if the weather will be good or not. All right, whether or not. So there are different ways you can use it. I would Google that, look for more examples of that, and as you get more examples, you will feel more confident about speaking. Uh, let's see, the psychotic again. I speak Arabic and I still teach English uh, with English to my students. Yes, good idea. Uh, and is either the same as any? No, because either is, either is talking about like one or two things, but any would be talking about multiple things. Okay, so I don't have like any clothes at my house. So I don't have pants, I don't have shirts, hats, gloves, jackets, I don't have anything at my house. But either would only be talking about two things. I don't have a coat or a jacket, all right? And again, get more examples. And that's how you will know if you're using something correctly. Remember, people have doubts about whether they will use something correctly or not, whether or not. Okay, I don't know if I can use it correctly or not. So if I can't use it correctly, maybe I will not speak. So you need to get more examples of things and that's what will make you feel confident, okay? Marjorie says, I'm having difficulty using between on and with. Now I don't wanna to get too, like I'm gonna to get too many comments over here asking me about specific prepositions. So I would Google that or also just go through my beginning grammar playlist right here on YouTube. So watch all those videos and I cover prepositions like that. Today's video is just giving a specific example about how my daughter got a more nuanced understanding of something and that's how she was able to feel more confident and she was able to kind of level up her understanding of that. Let's see, Gilbert says, could you turn up? You mean the volume? Uh, I think most people can hear me just fine. Just turn up your sound. It shouldn't be all the way up. Thanks for your guidance. Grasley says, hello, Drew, can you please explain how to pronounce can and can't. Get Frederick, it's in there. <laughs> can and can't. Uh, but in general, yes, you can, you're, you're paying attention more for the context. So if I say, no, I can't. Like, look at my head. No, no, I can't. Or yes, yes, I can. Yes, I can. So 
I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. My head is moving up and down like this. I can do that. I can do that. Landra says, what is the best way to improve speaking if you don't have communities to practice with? This. You increase your level of understanding by feeling more confident about something as you get more examples of it. That's how you do it. So if, if like most people, uh, like a lot of people will find my videos or my content, um, even if they live in the United States and have people to practice with, but they still don't feel confident about speaking. So having people to practice with is not what you need. You need to first feel confident about the language and then you will speak. So don't worry about finding people. The practice actually comes as you get more examples of the language and then you'll feel more confident about using it. That's how it works. It's really that simple. Uh, let's see, I don't know whether or not I will do my homework. Yeah, so you can say I don't know whether or not or you can just say I don't know whether I will do my homework. I don't know if, it's like, I don't know if I will do it. I don't know if I will do it. And most people just say, I don't know if I will do it or not, or whether or not. Both of those are fine. See, got, I forgot to ask how to use the word had instead of have correctly in the past situation. I've covered had before. Search my channel for that. Yesterday, I played COD. Always look at that. Zombie Zombies made with a teammate from America. It's a why. Wow. I don't know what that means, but I'm glad you uh, enjoy it. It's awesome. Okay, I see. Uh, I can talk with him. Nice. Very good. And thank you, says Avail111. John says, Hi, Drew. I arrived late, but I only pass here to tell you. Uh, thank you for all the valuable uh, value information. So you'd say valuable uh, information that you provide us. Greetings from Columbia. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. Al Andrew says, I already got Frederick. Thanks, Drew. Yes, go through the app. Good teacher Drew answering things on the fly. Well, that's what I do. We gotta be on the fly, on the fly. All right, but it looks like we have gotten to the end of chat and it didn't take us two hours like usual. Fantastic. Remember for you new people, number one, you do not become more fluent by just repeating things to yourself or other people because repeating things doesn't help you understand anything better. I could just say like blah, 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 blah. It doesn't actually help me learn anything more. But as I get more examples of things, that's when I feel more confident about the language. And when I feel confident, I speak. All right. Let's see. Uh, receiver says, did you develop Frederick by yourself? Really helpful. Thanks. Glad to hear it. Yes. Uh, I created like the idea and the process and developed everything and did all the recording for it. But I had to find a team because I don't know how to code an app. Uh, so I did, I found a great team to help me with that, uh, and we're still continuing to improve it. And future apps uh, will also kind of use the same idea, but allowing you to kind of play with the language more. And so we'll develop, Frederick was the, the first one I wanted to make because it started at the bottom, the very basic that any child could use to learn the language. So if you have children that you also want them to learn English, give them the app, let them play around with it, and they will actually teach themselves English the same way natives learn. Uh, and they won't go through all of the kind of difficulties that we had as we were learning another language, all right? So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email us at info at englishanyone.com as usual. Let's see, I live in the U.S. and I don't speak English. I forgot everything when I have the opportunity. Yes, so don't worry about meeting people to practice your English. The practice, the real practice, the true practice that you get to improve your fluency comes as you understand the language more. Let's see, uh, yes, Frederick is not supposed to respond on a rotate because like, it's like, we haven't, we haven't really made it like that where it would like, I mean, it would have to like move all the pieces around in the app. But yes, you should, you should be playing it in, uh, in widescreen like that. Uh, but maybe we will think of a way to like shift those pieces around in some creative way. We didn't think that was necessary to get it started. But uh, if you do enjoy it, please also give us a review on the App Store. So like on the App Store or the uh, like the Google Play Store. But we love to get more reviews and more likes, all of that stuff. It helps us, helps the channel out. Uh, you'll probably notice we do not have advertising on this channel because I want to give people lots of good content without them getting stuck waiting for ads and things like that. So all of the programs that we offer, including the app, are the way we put food on our table. So thank you for everyone who joins us and who joins the programs. But that will be it for today. Again, if you do have questions, you can comment down below. 
uh, or you can send us an email. And also, if you'd like to learn more about Frederick and Fluent for Life, you can click on the links in the description for that. Have a fantastic day. Uh, if you're talking about like the links, the links are down below uh, in the description for this video. So all of our, especially the live videos, uh, they're talking about that and you can find that. Well, Ildar, nice to see you there. I'm here in all ears. How about small talks is helpful. <laughs> yes, we'll maybe do a video about small talking at some other time, but we have uh, arrived at the end of this video and I hope everyone has had a fantastic time. Again, go back and watch it, review it again, and also look for more examples of things that you are interested in. It's the understanding that builds your fluency and speaking confidence. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.